All right, let's talk about some representations. So what we have is we start with the group G and a vector space V. That period at the end of S is not just an abbreviation, but also a period. Um, anyways, we say rho V is a representation of G. If we have a group homomorphism rho that goes from G to GLV. And so here, of course, GLV is um, hom C V to V. It's a collection of linear maps from V into V. Um, so I guess, I guess for now, at least for the first couple videos, when we're first starting to get used to representations, I'll go ahead and write rho comma v here. And so I'm going to specify both the map rho and the vector space v. Um, as we start getting into it, that's going to become a little cumbersome. And so it's going to be more natural to drop some of the um, things that we mention. We're, all, we're, we're typically going to drop g. g is going to be sort of implied throughout the whole thing because we typically when we're talking about representations, we might be talking about multiple representations, but we're typically talking about the same group. Um, because if you have different groups, then you're going to have different representations. Um, but anyways, so if we're going to drop some of this stuff, we might just say, okay, so I've had one professor in the past and also reading uh, Serre's, Jean, Jean Pierre Serre, I'm probably butchering the French pronunciation, pronunciation of that, but um, he has a fantastic textbook, um, uh, Linear Representations of Finite Groups, um, and yeah, that, that's, that's really good to get into representation theory, um, but both Serre and this professor I've had in the past when dropping one of these, they'll just refer to a representation as rho, and they'll have and g will be implied and v will be implied. Um, whereas the professor I'm learning from now prefers to just refer to a representation as v, and then the g will be implied, but the rho will be implied. So there's a lot of different ways that like people have different conventions of how they talk about these things, um, especially when they start dropping some of these things and kind of start getting really looser with with their notation. I'll, I'll, I'll try to be as explicit as I can, especially since this stuff, like it takes some getting used to. Um, so you're sometimes, if we want to reduce notation, we'll just write G and then this, this arrowy thingy, which we use for group actions, um, but G acting on a vector space V. And that's sort of what's happening here because if you think about it, when we had a group acting on a set, we had a map, a, a homomorphism from G. Like if we had a group G acting on a set X, we had a, a group homomorphism from the group G into um, the collection of set automorphisms on that set X. Whereas here, we have a group homomorphism from the group G into the... Um, collection of linear maps from V into V. So it, it, it's sort of similar in nature. Um, and so that's why you might use this arrowy, circle-y arrow thingy. Uh, the other thing is that you can tell if this is a representation or a group action based on what the second thing is. If the second thing is a vector space, it's a group action. No, if it's a vector space, it's a representation. If it's a set, it's a group action. If it's a, if you have a group action acting on a vector space, then I'm gonna go in, go ahead and not use this notation because that will get really confusing. Um, but anyway, so that's what a representation is. Let's look at an look at an example. This is perhaps not the easiest example we could have started with, but it's an example anyways. Okay, so going to let x be a set and g is going to act on this set. So this is a group action. Um, then because we have a group action, we have a homomorphism from g into um, set automorphisms on x, like I just said. 
Now let V be the collection of maps from X into C. And remember, we talked about in one of our earlier videos, when we first divide, uh, defined what the uh, ha what HOM C is from V into V, we noted that the only thing we used was that that second space was a vector space. And so we mentioned that you can actually define this um, these homomorphisms if, if, the fur, if the domain is just a set. And we'll say HOM sets um, X into C. And that's what we're doing here. So this is just uh, linear maps from a set X into C. So let's see here. Well, if they're, yeah, okay. So anyways, we're gonna let, so now, now we take a representation, um, G acts on V. Um, so our, our representation is gonna be rho comma V, where rho is given by rho G F of X. Okay, so rho is a, map from G into GLV. So um, this, this is a common notation. Sarah does this a lot where evaluating rho at G, you write that as rho and then you use G as a subscript. And then what you plug in here is um, whatever is in the um, domain. What you plug in here is an element of V. And so what this is going to give you it is a map. Row, row of G is going to give you a map from V into V. And so what you have to do is, in this case, row of G is going to give you a map from V into V. So a map from functions from X into C into functions from, from X into C. So in order to, so when you take row G and plug in a function F, you're going to get a function. And in order to see what that function does, you need to plug in x. OK, and so here's how we're going to define rho. If you, have, if you take rho, um, evaluate rho at g, um, right, if you evaluate rho at g, you're going to get a, a, a map from v into v. And if you plug in that function, if you plug in any particular v, say f, into that, um, then you're going to get a map from x into c, and that map is given by x. You plug in x, and you're going to get this whole thing. So f of tau g inverse x. So this tau here is the tau that we get from our group action, and so tau, you evaluate at g, at an element of g, here that element is g inverse, and it'll give you a set automorphism from x into x. So tau g inverse, evaluating at this at x, will give us an element of x. And then plugging in f of x, well f, f is a function from x into c, so evaluating f at this element of x will give us an element of c. And so all of this works out. So uh, again, this, this, this is really, the, there's a lot of things going on here. Each of the individual things are sort of easy to understand. Um, like rho is just a linear map, um, or rho is just a homomorphism. GLV is a collection of homomorphisms. Um, here, elements of F are just homomorphisms. But because there's so many of these simple things floating around, it becomes a little complicated and so you have to get used to juggling multiple things at the same time and of course I remember in the past having like like seeing things like this and getting really frustrated because it's like I I can't juggle all these thoughts at the same time but it's it's something that you get used to and you get better at uh, the more you do it so anyways that's what's going on here okay and this is for F and V G and G X and X Okay, so is this a representation? Well, it should be, um, and we need to prove that. So if you take any G and H and G and F and V and X and X, okay, so what we want to have 
we want to have this. We want rho evaluated at gh to be rho of g composed with rho of h because that's going to confirm that rho is a group homomorphism. So in order to verify that, um, we need this thing on the left evaluated at f to be the same thing as this thing on the right evaluated at f for every single f in um, v. And so the way you check that is that um, you evaluate rho g h at f and you evaluate that at x and that has to equal rho g composed with rho h evalu um, evaluated at f. That whole thing evaluated at x, you need those things to be equal for every single x and then if that holds for every single x, then it holds for every single f, if that holds for every single f, it holds for all g and h, and then you're done. So anyways, so we'll, we'll, we'll start at the, 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 the most um, sort of concrete level, the, the level where we have the most things plugged in, show that everything works out, and then sort of use that to go back to the more, to, to this thing. So anyways, if you have rho g h evaluated at f, and you evaluate, so this, this whole thing is going to give you an element of v, then you evaluate that at x. Um, then you just use the definition of rho to get to this. So we have f of tau of gh inverse, but gh inverse is h inverse g inverse, and that's how we get to here. Okay, and now that we're here, because tau is a set automorphism, tau of h inverse g inverse is equal to tau of h inverse composed with tau of g inverse. So that's how we get from this step to here. And so from here to here, we just sort of rewrite it. So instead of this being f evaluated at this whole, this composition of x, we consider this as f composed with tau h inverse being evaluated at tau g inverse of x. Okay, so here f composed with tau h inverse, this is going to be our function from x into c, and here this is going to be our element of x. Okay, but this thing, um, we have some element, some element of v um, evaluated at tau g, in, tau g inverse of x, and if you look at the definition of rho, this is precisely taking rho of g evaluated at this function, this whole thing being evaluated at x. And then from here, this thing on the inside here, this f of tau h inverse is the same thing as rho h of f. And just rewriting this, because this is rho g of rho h of f, this is the same as rho g composed with rho h of f, because that's what um, composition of functions is. Okay, so we have rho g h of f of x is equal to rho g of rho h of f of x. And this holds for every single x in capital X. And so it turns out that rho g h of f is equal to rho g of rho h of f. And then this holds for every single f in v and so rho g h is equal to rho g composed with rho h. And this holds for every single g and h in g, which means that rho is a group homomorphism, and hence rho comma v is a representation of g. And that's how that proof works. Okay, so there's an example of a group homomorphism. No, of a, of a representation. Okay, so that's a representation. Now let's say we have a representation rho comma v, a representation of g. If you have a subspace v prime of v, then this is a sub, this gives us a sub representation if rho g evaluated at v. So actually, if we want to be consistent with how we've been writing this previously, then we can write rho sub g of v is going to be contained in v prime for every single g in g and for every single v in v prime. Um, and then if we 
use rho prime to denote rho restricted to v prime, then we say that rho prime comma v prime is g stable. So really we could call rho prime comma v prime our sub-representation. And I actually have this backwards. Because it's, it, it's really the, the, the subspace itself, which is G-stable. Um, which sort of makes sense, because what this says is that if you take rho sub, sub G and evaluate it at anything in V, in, in V prime, then you're going to stay in V prime. So if, you're, if you take a represent, so if you take rho sub G, and evaluate at something in V prime, you're going to stay in V prime. And so there's sort of this uh, stability if you're once you're in V prime, and hence this is why we call it G stable. And the G, of course, refers to the fact that we're evaluating rho at G. And then if you let rho prime be um, rho restricted to V prime, so we just take this um, group homomorphism and restrict to uh, G. Um, Rho, hmm, right, right, so instead of mapping G into GLV, we map G into GLV prime. So, so what this means is that, um, so rho prime is going to go from G into GLV prime, and indeed, rho prime defined um, where um, rho g v or rho prime g of v is going to equal rho g v for all v and v prime. And in fact, this works, this gives us, um, this gives us a map from g into g l v prime because if we plug in anything of v prime here, we know that we're going to stay in v prime since um, the subspace is g stable. And um, this is also going to be, um, rho g prime is going to be a linear map since rho g is a linear map. Okay, so if we let rho prime be rho restricted to g, rho restricted to v prime, and by that we're referring to this, then what we say is that rho prime comma v prime is a sub-representation of rho. Or, or technically, if we want to be more explicit here, which I think would be better, rho comma v. And so we have this sort of uh, relation between, how am I doing on time? Running out. So we have this sort of relation between um, sub-representations and um, stable, stable subspaces, and we'll, we'll make we'll we'll go into more detail about that. Okay, so that's that. Um, okay, and then we we want to consider maps between representations because in group in algebra, once you define a new thing, uh, you want to talk about maps between them because it's all sort of leading up to category theory, in which the only things that matter are what sets are you working on and what are the maps between sets. So if we have uh, um, representations, then we want to figure out what we, what, what we should define as a map between representations. So if we have two representations, rho 1 v1 and rho 2 v2, two representations of the same group G, so again this goes back to typically where even if we have multiple representations, they'll be over the same group G we're rarely dealing with um, separate groups. Um, so anyways, if you have a, a map F, which is a linear map between the vector spaces V1 and V2, then we say it's intertwining if for every single G and G, F of rho 1G is the same as rho 2G of F. So here, I, li I liked earlier having using G as a subspace here, or G as a subscript to denote 
row being evaluated at G, but here I'm reserving the subscripts to um, reflect the fact that I'm talking about different representations. And so I have to put the G's by themselves. Um, so we have this, and so this diagram commutes. So, and it commutes for every single G and G. So if you take any G and G, then going from V1 to V1 through row 1G and then going from V1 to V2 through F is going to be the exact same thing as going from V1 to V2 through F and then from V2 to V2 through row 2G. And these maps F that satisfy this property are going to be our um, maps between representation theory. And we'll go into more detail on that in the next video.